ladies and gentlemen, um, good morning. Um, welcome um, uh, to Greece. Uh, I understand from the organizers that you've never had such a number of delegates join your gatherings uh, over the past years, and I guess it must have something to do with the location uh, and, uh, uh, and the weather. And, uh, but this summit is uh, being held here not just because uh, Greece is a beautiful country and because uh, this is an extraordinary uh, uh, location, but also because uh, the Public Power Corporation brought this event uh, to Greece. And I do want to start by pointing out that uh, PPC has undergone a truly remarkable transformation uh, uh, in the recent years uh, under the leadership of uh, George Stasis. I remember when I began my tenure as uh, Prime Minister five years ago, uh, PPC was probably the most pressing problem we were facing uh, at the time. Um, it was financially challenged, and maybe, uh, I need to be more blunt, it was literally on the verge of bankruptcy. It was organizationally uh, lethargic, and strategically it was way, way behind its times. But uh, today, uh, the situation is uh, completely different. Uh, PPC transformation story has been truly, I think, remarkable. It is uh, a regional powerhouse, it is a serious player on the European uh, uh, stage, as is evident by George's role um, in Euroelectric. Uh, and the fact that we are meeting today in this room, I think, is a testament um, to that uh, change. But what happened with the Public Power Corporation is but one example of uh, Greece's uh, broader transformation over the past five years. Uh, when we came uh, into power in July 2019, this country was literally devastated by uh, a decade-long economic crisis. Uh, it had paid very dearly for believing populist fantasies. In 2015, we almost literally crashed out of the Eurozone. The economy was stagnant. We had the lowest growth rate between 2015 and 2019 of all Eurozone countries. And uh, young Greeks were voting with their feet and abandoning um, the country in search of more opportunities abroad. Today, the situation is very, very different. Our growth rate is uh, twice the EU average and forecast to remain high for the foreseeable future. We have lowered our public debt more than uh, any other uh, European country since 2019. Nobody is questioning uh, Greece's uh, commitment to financial discipline, investment, industri industrial production, exports are booming, credit uh, agencies uh, uh, rate uh, Greece as investment grade again after more than a, uh, a decade. And high unemployment, when we came into power, unemployment was at 17%, uh, 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 has given way to now companies complaining that uh, they cannot fill the jobs that they advertise uh, for. And many Greeks um, who left uh, during the crisis are actually returning or coming back, and uh, we will honor their trust uh, in, in the country. And I think that... Uh, Energy has been one of those uh, areas, one of those sectors where our progress uh, has been uh, uh, most, I would say, extraordinary. In 2019, uh, um, just a few months after I was sworn in as Prime Minister, uh, I addressed uh, the United uh, uh, Nations General Assembly, and at the time I made the commitment that Greece would shut down all its lignite plants by 2028. Uh, now, ahead of plan, we're actually close to meeting this target. Uh, in uh, 2023, our lignite generation was at its lowest point uh, over 50 years. Uh, and uh, output has declined by 87% relative to its uh, peak. And as lignite is 
uh, phased out, uh, renewables are taking its place. I just came back um, from a campaign trip um, uh, to uh, Western Macedonia, uh, which was where uh, most of our lignite was extracted, and it is indeed impressive to see you know, the old um, uh, coal plant sitting idle and lots of solar um, uh, currently occupying um, uh, the, uh, uh, the space. Uh, and uh, it's a very good indication of what has been happening uh, across the country uh, since 2019. We have uh, practically more than doubled our installed cap um, capacity, not just, of wind, not just of solar, but also wind and solar. And uh, Greece is now a world leader when it comes uh, to the penetration of wind and solar. Our fourth in the world, if you include smaller countries that mostly import their electricity. Second in the world, if you do not, and only Denmark has a higher penetration of uh, 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 electricity from uh, wind and solar. And this is a pretty remarkable achievement, and it did happen uh, rather quickly. And this uh, growth in uh, renewables is a part of a broader uh, system transformation. In 2023, we doubled investments in our grids relative to the average of uh, the years between 2020 and 2022, which in turn was 50% higher than what it was in the period between 2012 and 2019. We are investing in pumped hydro. We have uh, held two uh, auctions for grid scale uh, batteries. We're looking again, and PPC has a leading role to play in, in this, in our hydro uh, resources, uh, recognizing that the prudent management uh, of water can help on the one hand side with balancing the grid, but also building up our resilience against the climate crisis. We're finally rolling out smart meters. And when I look at this uh, energy transition, I see significant opportunity. Greece uh, has traditionally been uh, resource, with the exception of lignite, has been resource poor in terms of uh, uh, fossil fuels. But we do have a bright sun and we do have uh, strong winds. Anyone who has spent time in Greece uh, knows this, uh, and, and these resources can act as the backbone of a completely different energy system. And right now, our main um, headache is how to handle the incredibly high interest uh, that companies have to invest uh, in, in Greece. Uh, and to a certain degree, one can argue that we have been victims of our own success. And we have yet, we have yet to tap our most promising resource, and that is offshore wind, primarily in the Aegean uh, Sea, which has uh, probably the, the best uh, offshore wind capacity of any um, uh, other area uh, in the entire Mediterranean. Uh, and we see Greece can become uh, a significant net electricity exporter uh, over the years to come. This is already happening you know, for some hours, but as we um, exploit, as we fully exploit our potential, these hours will eventually multiply. And uh, stepping beyond our national borders, we have also been able to influence the European agenda when it comes to um, uh, energy. It's also a testament to the fact that Greece is no longer perceived as a problem child of Europe, but as a confident country that can punch above its weight and drive uh, um, policy at the European level, not just at the national level. We actually played a, uh, you know, some role in terms of coping with the energy crisis uh, that Russia triggered after uh, its invasion uh, of uh, Ukraine. Um, I was uh, advocating for uh, you know, some sort of cap um, uh, uh, on, uh, on, on natural gas prices for quite some time before the European Union decided to go down that path. And I was actually the first um, uh, to, to put uh, the issues of grids and interconnections um, uh, at the level of the European Council. And this was, uh, I think, the starting point for uh, which led to the uh, EU action plan on grids uh, and your initiative here. I understand, you know, grids uh, for speed is to uh, an important uh, um, contribution uh, in this conversation. And grids have a key role 
to play, not just uh, in enabling the energy transition of each country. In our case, for example, a big priority is making sure that we interconnect uh, our islands. A big milestone was set with the interconnection of, uh, uh, of Crete, which is my, uh, my, my, my home island, but the interconnections are expanding. Um, to all the uh, important islands uh, um, uh, of the Aegean and the uh, Ionian. But of course, interconnection and grids matter also across Europe. And you know better than me that we're still far uh, away from a single market in Europe. And uh, the lack of proper interconnectors is, uh, is one reason. And countries at the periphery, such as Greece, sometimes move at a different rhythm uh, than those uh, that find themselves at the core, at the center of uh, Europe. And uh, we see that strong uh, uh, interconnectors uh, can help us balance uh, our system more easily, especially if we can complement the, the sun of the uh, Mediterranean uh, with the wind uh, of, uh, uh, of the North Sea. I always keep um, referring to a nice diagram that my energy advisor showed me, which really indicates you know, how much excess wind capacity we have in the winter uh, in northern Europe and how much ex solar capacity we have um, uh, in the south during, uh, during um, uh, the, uh, the summer. Uh, this, I mean, if we were able to have proper grids, uh, then we would really be able to uh, help carry energy from where it is cheapest uh, to produce to where it is most needed and helping us deliver the energy transition, which is a necessity for all of us, but to do it at a lower uh, cost. Uh, and to accomplish this, I think we need to think in pan-European terms and beyond uh, merely national interests. We do need continent-wide uh, planning, uh, and we need to, I think, visualize electricity flows across uh, a broader space, eventually bringing North Africa, even Middle East, into play. We, for example, are discussing uh, three uh, gigawatt interconnection, electricity interconnection with, uh, uh, with Egypt. Uh, and of course, uh, we need continent-wide resources to make these uh, uh, investment, uh, uh, investments uh, uh, possible. And I will continue to advocate for those. Uh, I was one of the major proponents uh, for the Recovery and Resilience Facility, which uh, Europe created during the pandemic when we took a very bold decision uh, against what you know, many countries believed at the time was the appropriate strategy to, to borrow at the European level and to support both the green and the digital transition, but also to support jobs. And this happened during the pandemic. Greece uh, is a significant, the highest per capita recipient of funds from uh, uh, the, the, the RRF, in total 36 billion euros um, in grants and loans to be invested in Greece until 2026. Uh, uh, but of course, we also have to take into account our shifting geostrategic uh, agenda. We see other regions, in particular the US uh, and China, uh, have their own plans for the transition, and we need to incorporate uh, um, uh, these uh, um, uh, these realities, uh, uh, and, and frankly, I'll be very, very blunt with you. Um, when I look at the scale of our ambitions um, in terms of becoming a geopolitical um, a powerhouse, in terms of driving the green and the digital transition, supporting jobs, and then I look at the resources that we allocate to those priorities, there's a clear mismatch at the European level, and this is something that we need um, uh, to recognize. And at the same time, I firmly believe that we cannot uh, erect barriers and expect Europe to be competitive through protectionism. But at the same time, we cannot uh, allow um, European industry to wither away under undue competition. It's a difficult balance um, uh, to strike, but it must be a balance also that needs to work for all European countries and not just for those that have the fiscal space to spend freely. Some countries are in a stronger fiscal position. Uh, and of course, if state aid rules are, are bent uh, very, very easily, it is those countries that have the strong fiscal position that will eventually distort the single market by simply supporting their national uh, champions in a way that maybe other countries um, cannot, uh, cannot do. Uh, but most importantly, the, the Green Deal 
needs to exist alongside uh, other urgent tasks. We are at the forefront of the climate crisis here uh, uh, in Greece. Just last year, we experienced not just heat waves and wildfires. We're accustomed to wildfires, but we also, for the first time, uh, experienced at this scale extremely catastrophic uh, um, uh, floods. All this happened within the span of a few months. There is also a fundamental discontinuity within the Green Deal between the funds that are allocated um, to mitigation, and rightly so, with our very you know, um, lofty ambitions to become carbon neutral by 2050, and those um, actually um, committed to um, uh, adaptation. Because when natural disasters strike, you know, I cannot just go to my farmers and talk to them about you know, eventually you know, precision farming and replacing their tractors with electric tractors. They need support here and there. Uh, and uh, we need to understand that coping with the climate crisis also will require significant adaptation um, um, uh, uh, funding in the years to come. In, in Greece, also using European funding, we are investing more than 2 billion euros over the next three to four years to bolster our civil protection um, uh, uh, infrastructure. Uh, and all this is happening at a time when our strategic situation remains precarious. We know we must devote more resources to uh, defend. Uh, and uh, more than two years into a devastating uh, war, we cannot harbor illusions about the utility of smart uh, military uh, investment. We need a European strategy for strategic autonomy. And this is coming from a country that has been systematically spending more than 2% of its GDP on defense at a time when other countries were spending barely 1%. You do the math over 30 years, Greece never actually um, benefited from the peace dividend after the uh, collapse of the, uh, of the war, of the, of the Berlin Wall and the demise of the, uh, uh, of the Soviet uh, uh, Union. Uh, but uh, uh, now this again becomes uh, a, uh, a, a priority uh, on all um, fronts. So by, let me conclude that in a, in a few weeks from now, uh, Europeans will go um, uh, to the polls to elect a, a new parliament. And I would hope that uh, the forces of reason and, uh, and, and moderation will again prevail. Um, of course, I'm campaigning for my own political family, the European People's Party, which um, is going to be the biggest party in the European Parliament. But by ourselves, um, we need to make sure that we have the proper allies to drive through um, you know, reasonable changes and to restrict the influence of the uh, extremes. My belief and Greece's belief is that we need more Europe and not less. Uh, there are people who think we must slow down the energy transition. I'm not one of them. Uh, it's an economic, strategic, and geopolitical imperative, but we must carry out a transition that makes uh, sense, and one that also gives member states maybe a little bit more room to experiment uh, and select the path that suits their individual circumstances. And it's important to remain flexible uh, and pragmatic uh, rather than very prescriptive uh, and, uh, and very uh, dogmatic. If you, for example, look at the impact that the Green Deal has had on our farmers, uh, I do think that maybe we've got the balance you know, slightly wrong in terms of imposing unnecessary bureaucratic uh, restrictions without uh, understanding the impact that these would have on the livelihoods of our, um, uh, of our agricultural uh, sector um, uh, today. But at the end, you know, what, what matters is not just climate neutrality after all. We are not the only in Europe we cannot, by ourselves, um, determine what will happen with the fate of global emissions. But what matters equally is for Europe to be a strong, uh, economically and social vibrant, but more importantly, geopolitically relevant around the world. And this Europe certainly will be a green uh, a Europe. But uh, how we get there matters just as much. So, Thank you very much for inviting me, and I wish you the best uh, in your proceedings. Thank you very much. Thank you.